Hi, my name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman & Associates. Our firm has a primary focus on family law issues throughout the state of Michigan. Today we're continuing our video series designed to educate and inform the public, so please subscribe to our channel. What do you do in a situation where you've gone to trial, you've gone before the court, and the court makes a custody ruling that you don't like? Didn't exactly work out how you planned it. What are your options? Well, if it's a friend of the court judge, that made a decision. In most cases, those decisions can be appealed to the judge, him or herself, on a de novo basis, and you can have another hearing in front of the judge. Sometimes not. Sometimes the parties agree that the front of the court's going to try the case, and that's going to be it in exchange for having the judge do it. If that's the case, then that decision of the FOC referee becomes the same as the decision of the judge. And if you don't like the decision of the judge, you are left to go to the Court of Appeals. You can file an appeal with the Michigan Court of Appeals and you can challenge the court's ruling on custody. You have to understand one thing though. First of all, the Court of Appeals, when you make an appeal, it can't just be you don't like the decision, you lost so you're appealing. I mean, you can do that, but you're gonna lose. The Court of Appeals looks for assignments of error, meaning there's a judge who made the decision and he or she did something wrong. What is it that they did wrong? So I'm going to give you some examples. Let's say, for example, you have a custody case. The other side has an attorney. They filed an appropriate brief. They filed an appropriate witness list. They submitted their exhibits, and they did all that. And you decided you're going to save money, so you're not going to hire a lawyer, and therefore you don't do any of those things. You don't answer interrogatories. You don't answer the request to admit. You don't file any exhibits with the court. You don't present before the court any evidence so that your case, when it comes time for trial, so that any of this can be viewed. And then you come up for trial and you want to introduce this and that. And the court says, wait a minute, there's a scheduling order. If you don't follow it, I'm not allowing any of that evidence. The order says very clearly, there are no surprises here. You got to give that to the other side. Did you do so? No, you did not. I'm disallowing it. So at the end of the day, the court only has evidence from one person. So. Based on that evidence, the court makes a ruling. You want to appeal. Can you appeal? What are you going to appeal? What did the judge do wrong? The judge didn't do anything wrong. The judge judged the case based on the evidence before it. Now, you can say, well, the assignment of error, for example, is the court failed to let in my evidence or allowed evidence in that it shouldn't have come in. It was hearsay. It was not an exception. It was more prejudicial than probative of anything. The court shouldn't have let it in. That kind of issue, that's what you can argue. But you can't just go in there and say, well, I lost, so I want to appeal. Not only that, if you think trial procedures are complicated, appellate procedures are even more complicated. You want to save money on the judge, you're going to have to spend money on the appeal lawyer. So it really doesn't necessarily make sense. Now, it is possible that you had lawyers all the way around and you lost anyway. Perhaps the court failed to consider a piece of evidence that was crucial. Perhaps the court considered something that it shouldn't have. Then you can file an appeal. But notice what you're doing at that point in time. You're saying that there's an assignment of error, that the lower court erred because it allowed evidence items A, B, C, and D when they were not admissible, or the court failed to consider admissible evidence. You can argue that. And then the Court of Appeals has an opportunity to rule. Now, remember one thing. Just because there's a mistake doesn't mean the court will overturn it. The Court of Appeals has discretion to say a couple of things. It can say, yes, there was a mistake and we're reversing and remanding for further proceedings. Or we're reversing so that the court can consider this and make an appropriate findings of fact and rule, rulings of law. The court can also say, yes, this was a mistake. Yes, it, it should have been allowed in, but it wasn't. But it's harmless error. It would not have made a difference to the ultimate custody determination. It would not have made a difference regarding the ultimate distribution of assets. In other words, let's say the court allowed something in or shouldn't allow something in, but nonetheless gave 50-50. The court appeals can say, you know what? We disagree with what the court did. We would have done it differently ourselves. We might have believed this witness instead of that witness, but nonetheless... We don't feel that the court abused its discretion, or even if it did, we don't feel that it did a way that made a difference. So there's a lot of things that you can take up to appeal, but remember the court can even agree with you and you can still lose your appeal. The court can still find that because it didn't make a difference, uh, they're not gonna overturn. So there's a real practical aspect in the law 
Um, a lot of times the court will look at something and say, yeah, but so what? It didn't make a difference. The Court of Appeals is the same way. They may say, yes, you are technically correct. However, we don't elevate form over substance, so therefore we're leaving it as it is. You have to be prepared for that. If you think you have an issue that should be reviewed by higher court, give us a call. We'll be glad to see if we can help you with that.